Welcome to Hopewell Amy Church. It is Family and Friends Day 2020, and we are so excited that you're able to join us. Our pastors, the Reverend Jared Britton Washington, and our first family is Lady Deronda Washington and Braylon JL. Please enjoy this worship experience. But first, a word from our first family. Good morning, and thank you for joining the Hopewell African Methodist Episcopal Church also known as the House of Hope Hemingway. I am Pastor Jarrett Britton Washington. I'm Lady Deronda Washington. And I'm Raylan J. Washington. And what can we say that God allowed us to make it to the third Sunday in July? Traditionally, this Sunday is known as Friends and Family Day, homecoming at Hopewell AME Church. Unfortunately, we're not in the building, but the church is still going on. And so I just want to thank God for all of the friends, all of the family, all of the people who continue to do the work that God has set their feet to do and their hands to work because we are continuing to be a blessing and God gets all the glory. Hopewell community and Hopewell friends and family thought for the week. Count it all joy when you have loving family and friends. Count it all joy when you have loving family and friends. During this pandemic season, it has been amazing to have friends that have been showing support, friends that have been honoring the porch ministry here in Charleston. So I am so grateful that during this season that we are able to have loving family and friends that we can always count on before and after this pandemic season. So when you think about your family and friends on today, make sure that you count it all joy. And as we continue to worship, let us thank God for the ministry gifts of the children's sermon that is now being brought to you today by Sister Tanika Roper. Let us bless God for her life and let us continue to worship God together. Greetings, Hopewell Church family and friends. My name is Tanika Roper and today I will be presenting the children's message, which is titled, we are part of God's family. It's based off of Mark, the third chapter, the 34th through 35th verses. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Have you ever been to a family reunion? You know what that is, don't you? It is a time for all the members of a family to get together. Grandpas and grandmas, moms and dads, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, and lots and lots of cousins. Most of the time it will include playing a lot of games and eating a lot of food, but the main reason for a reunion is to help family members to stay in touch with one another. Many times, family members become scattered and live in different towns and different states for far away from one another. They may keep in contact by mail, email, social media, or by the phone, but nothing beats a family reunion to help a family to stay in touch. We should never overlook the importance of family. In the very first book of the Bible, God established the family. He created Adam and Eve blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. God intended for family members to be there to care for one another in times of need. Family is there to help us when we are sick. When we are young, our parents and grandparents look after us. As our parents and grandparents get older, that sometimes changes and we become the ones to take care of our parents or grandparents. That's what family is all about. You might not realize it, but when we put our faith in Jesus, we become part of another family. We become a part of God's family. In our Bible reading today, Jesus looked at a group of people seated around him and said, See, my mother and my brothers, whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. When we put our faith in Jesus, we become a part of a family of believers the church. Just as the members of our earthly family have a responsibility to love and care for one another, members of our church family have a responsibility to love and care for one another. 
Here are some ways we can show love to our brothers and sisters in the family of God. Pray for those who are sick, feed those who are hungry, give clothing to those in need, give shelter to the homeless, comfort those who are sad, be a friend to those who have no friends. Family is important. Our earthly family and our spiritual family. Never take them for granted. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our families. Thank you for grandparents, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters. We also thank you for our church family. Help us to love and care for one another as you have taught us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hallelujah. Can we give God the best praise that we can lift in this room? Come on, all over the nation, all over the world. Come on, just lift your praise right there this morning. Come on, can you shout the Lord in this place? Oh, shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Come on, make some crazy noise in this place. Come on, for he is king of kings and he's lord of lords. No man can take his place and no man can dethrone our God. Come on, we need him to do something this morning. Come on, lift up your voices in this place and cry out to him. Come on, the Lord wants to hear the cry of his people. Come on, shout out to God. Come on, I said shout out to God. Come on, open up your mouth all over this nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we worship this morning? Can we worship? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The song simply says, here's my worship. Hallelujah. Can I get all hands lifted this morning? Hallelujah. Here it goes. Worship all of my worship. 
long as I am breathing. I come to testify this morning that millions didn't make it, but I was one of the ones that did. As long as Good morning. Would you join me in scripture in the book of Job, chapter number 22, and looking at verse number 27. As you look, let me just thank God for one more chance and one more day to say a word for God. I truly thank God for the spirit of the Holy Spirit that's moving, breathing, and having life even in us right now. I always want to thank God for Jesus because I realize if it had not been for him on my side, I don't know where it is I would be. I thank you, the House of Hope, Hopewell African Methodist Episcopal Church. And I want to thank God for our Friends and Family Day Committee. I want to bless God for our leader, Sister Doretha P. Vereen, who is leading us on this day with the charge for Friends and Family Day. We know we are not in the building but we know the building is still yet in us. And so I thank God for you. I have to always thank God for my wonderful wife and partner in ministry, Lady Deronda. And I thank God for our daughter, Braylon, who gives us the energy to keep on running to see what the end is going to be. I must say that it's kind of interesting that I find myself today again recording from inside my home. I want you to know that we already pre-recorded at the church and Unfortunately, due to some technical difficulties, I have to be in my home right now to record with you. But I want you to know that there is still yet a word from God and that God makes no mistakes. And so I thank God for the opportunity and the chance just to declare yet another word on this being the third Sunday in July. And so I found myself reading a very familiar scripture or maybe not so familiar in the book of Job chapter number 22 in verse number 27. The word of God specifically says that you will make a prayer unto him and God will hear you and you will pay your vows unto the Lord your God. You will also declare a thing. This is what is important. And it will be established unto you so light will shine all in your ways. I love that very last part of the scripture that says that you will also declare a thing. God, I thank you. And it will be established unto you. On this third Sunday in July, God has released me to preach to somebody from this word on this day. Check your relationships. Check your relationships. Father God, in the name of Jesus, would you just allow the very words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in your sight. For God, you are my strength and my redeemer. And we all say together, amen. Check your relationships. Sometimes, my brothers and my sisters, I have to be led to ask the question about the kind of friends that each of us has in our lives. Even in this season of our lives of COVID-19, I have to ask the question as to what kind of people do we have in our circle uh, who are willing to tell us really like it really is. How many people, my brothers and sisters, do we call our friends who have the ability to tell us the very things that we don't even want to hear? How often do you take an inventory 
inventory. Yes, we must take an inventory of the people in our lives to see if they are really the kind of people that are helping us lead a life that's going in the right direction. Ask yourself even right now, do I have the kind of friends in my life that will let me know when they feel as if I've made a mistake or whether I have messed up? See, too often we get ourselves trapped in situation after situation because we are surrounding ourselves with people who always tell us what we want to hear. But how many of you understand who are watching that you need people in your life who are not always going to agree with you, but sometimes you need people who are just simply going to push you in the direction God wants you to go. I believe we're talking this morning about checking our relationships. I declare to somebody up in here that many times you can tell a whole lot of pe about people just by the very friends they have in their circle. Uh, and so while I was reading and trying to understand what to say on a day we call Friends and Family Day. My mind was fixated on Job chapter 22. Uh, I knew we all knew the story of Job where the Bible says he was blameless and upright and always careful to avoid evil. Uh, I knew we knew the story that one day Satan appeared before God in heaven uh, and God begins to boast about the goodness of Job. Uh, I know we knew the story that Satan says Job is only good because because God had given him so many blessings and God had blessed his life abundantly. I knew that we already knew that Satan challenges God that if given permission to punish Job, that Job would turn and curse God. We knew this because we've studied this so many times before. But can I help you understand the essence of the book of Job? Because immediately after Satan had began to share all of that with God, God reminds Satan that you can torment him you can test him, but you must not kill him. God began to boast about how good Job really was and how everything that Satan was saying against him was not the case or the matter. And I began to think as I thought about you, my people of God, and those who serve God with a willing heart, I had to ask myself in this season, can God really boast about me? Can God really tell every adversity and every enemy that Jared is a good person. See, sometimes we are so willing to talk about other people when we need to be thinking about what God can say about us. You got to stop sometimes, even in the midst of all the work that you're doing, and say, God, can you really trust me like I say you can? See, in the course of one day, the Bible says that Job began to receive four messages, each bearing separate news about his livestock, about his servant, and and even about his 10 children, uh, that all of those things had passed away. Uh, Job begins, the Bible says, to tear his clothes and, and he shaves his head while he's mourning. Uh, but still God blesses and God still hears Job's prayers. Uh, Satan goes back to heaven because Satan, he's not done with Job. Uh, and Satan says, I want to test Job some more. This time Job is then afflicted with horrible scores on his skin. Uh, his wife then encourages him, Job, I know you've been through so much. I know you love God, but Job, I really need you to curse God and give up and die. But Job refuses and he accepts what God allows. I realize, brothers and sisters, it may be difficult. I realize that there are so many challenges that each of us has to face, but we ought to be a living testimony that I'm going to accept every thing that God allows. Sometimes it may look rough. Sometimes it may be out of whack. Trials will certainly come. Who am I talking to? But you must always learn to accept what God allows in your life. And I speak to every blood washed believer because I feel the Holy Ghost moving in this moment. And I want to declare to you even in this pandemic that we're going through that God still has a purpose for your life. You just need to check your relationships. So as the story progresses, we learn about these relationships 
that Job has. The Bible says that three of Job's friends, I believe Eliphaz and Bildad and Zophar, come to Job's house to visit him. The Bible says that out of respect, they sit with Job for seven whole days while he mourns the loss of his loved one. But anybody know that something begins to happen on that seventh day? God, I thank you, Jesus. Because Job begins a conversation with the men in his house and Job begins to tell them why he believes he is suffering his situation. Don't you understand that even in the midst of Job trying to come to understanding with what is going on in his life, that the Bible says his friends begin to partake and participate in why they think things are going wrong in Job's life. I want to look right at you in this camera and I want to declare to you right now that there are so many people in your life who feel like they know how you can get through what you're going through. Uh, there are so many people in your life uh, that seems to know the answer to every problem you have going on. Uh, this is why I get so puzzled today uh, because the more I look on social media, I realize we got more doctors and lawyers and chief musicians and, and adjudicators in any college or in any courtroom. Uh, I really have to discover that there are people right now who can tell you how to handle this pandemic better than the people who are in position. Uh, why? Because so many of us act like we know when we really don't know. And I find it interesting that Job in the Bible had been suffering and now his friends come to his house after sitting there for seven days, after watching this man mourn the loss of his children, after watching this man's body be filled with sores, after watching sickness all over his life, that his friends now come to his house and they begin to declare why you're going through what you're going through. Uh, the Bible says that Bildad tells Job uh, that Job's children brought the death upon themselves. Uh, the Bible says that Zophar tells Job uh, that whatever he's done wrong, he's probably deserved the retreatment uh, that he's going through right now. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, you gotta watch the people who are speaking into your life uh, because there are people who are speaking into your life uh, that don't know God like you know God. Uh, you gotta learn how to look to God and look and live because in every situation there will be people on the outside of your problem who can tell you how to handle it but I declare God is in this season telling us that we must check every relationship because some relationships are not for our good but then I kept on reading because I just could not accept what Bildad and Zophar had said to Job and so then I learned about this man named Eliphaz. And I began to study who Eliphaz was. And the Bible says that Eliphaz's name in the Hebrew uh, means that God is our strength. Uh, and so Eliphaz looks at Job uh, and he says, Job, despite what you're going through, uh, I want you to begin to seek God's favor. He says, now is a time in your life, Job, uh, where you got to get right with God. Who am I talking to? Uh, and I contend to somebody listening uh, that you can't allow every negative of to outweigh what God is saying in your life. Sometimes you need an Eliphaz in your life to remind you that not only is God your strength, but you need God to seek God's favor. And I don't know who I'm talking to even right now, but I declare to somebody right now in this world that while you're yet watching this, God will literally position people in your pathway that are going to speak positive things into your life. Don't let when people heard about you uh, be the final say so on your life uh, but literally take what they say uh, with a grain of salt uh, but take it to God in prayer because in this season uh, people like Eliphaz will remind us uh, that we may not be perfect uh, but we're seeking God's perfection uh, and I believe and I declare right now uh, to somebody who's watching uh, that you need to understand uh, that Eliphaz was only trying to help. Uh, see he reminds Job in the season uh, of the very good things 
things he's done in the past. He reminds Job in this season that despite what everything looks like, you are still a man of God. I want to remind somebody right now that despite what you did in the past, I'm looking right at you, that God says in this season, it's not your past that's going to make you better, but it's what's going on in your future. It's how you handle your right now. I declare, do not despise your small beginnings because if you wait on the Lord, God says in this season, I will still bless you. And if God can bless Job to hear the word from Eliphaz, I believe God's blessing you right now to hear the word over your life that if you check your relationships, you'll know what God needs you to do. God, I thank you this morning. Mm, Eliphaz begins to look at Job. I'm reading this now. And he says to a man who had lost everything in his life, he says in verse 27, you will make a prayer unto him. He, God will hear you and you will pay your vows. You will also declare a thing, Job, and it will be established unto you. So the light will shine in all of your ways. What I need you to understand, brothers and sisters, as I make haste to the close of this sermon, is that when you pray, God still hears you, even when you've messed up in life. Too often, the church of old would tell you that when you're in a bad situation, that God does not hear you, and God does not understand, and therefore God will not bless you. Uh, but I declare to somebody in here that God is the same God that in the midst of whatever you're going through, you can say, God, our Father, which art in heaven, God, whatever I'm going through, Father, I stretch my hands to thee, God, whatever I'm going through, even if I can't speak, I'll just wave my hands because despite what it looks like, despite where I am, God still blesses me. Do you believe, do you understand that there are people who are watching this message right now who are living in the enemy's camp? There are people watching this message right now who have been through all kinds of hell this past week. There are people who are watching this message right now who are going through struggles, trials, and tribulations. They're worried about their family. They're worried about their children. They're worried about their finances. And some people would have them to believe that because they're going through what they're going through, it means that God does not love you. Uh, but I came as a living witness to tell you uh, that even in the midst of every technical difficulty I've had this week in the midst of every family problem, I've had this week in the midst of everybody who prayed for me and those who prayed against me, God told me to tell you on a day like today that God is saying if you check your relationships and you make sure you got the right people in your life, that God says, I will literally take what you're going through and I will bless you. You need the kind of friends in your life that can say that I am redeemed, I am sanctified, I am made righteous in Christ. You need to check every relationship and say, I need the kind of friends that can come to me and say that all of my sins have been forgiven. My brothers and my sisters, you need the kind of friends in your life that can say, I am a new creation. I am bought with a price. All of my sins have passed away. Job was literally discussing with Eliphaz in the Old Testament with Jesus discusses with us through Paul when he shares that I can do all things uh, through Christ who strengthens me. I want you to check every relationship, check every person connected with you and declare that despite even when they don't think good of me, that I'm still going to pray for them. I'm still going to bless God for their life. I'm still going to share the omnipotence, the greatness and the power of God because in this season I've come too far for God to now leave me. I'm checking every relationship and I'm going to let God bless me despite what I've been through, despite my past, despite everything I've lost, despite every trial, despite every circumstance, despite every hater, despite every lie against me. God 
in the name of Jesus, I thank you today that I'm checking my relationship. I'm looking at my friends. I'm looking at my family. I'm understanding who's for me and who's against me. And believer of God, let me remind you, there are more people for you than there are against you. I'm preaching to myself that God, whatever it is I'm going through, you're taking me through in this season so you could bless me, so you could keep my mind when I wanted to lose it. You can keep my body when I'm going through sickness and pain. God, despite everything, I am a witness that I will check my relationship. God, I thank you this morning for your connection on today. I thank God for your entire life. I thank God for how God is using you even in this season, because I believe God still yet is working on each and every one of us. I want to thank you and I want to pray God in the name of Jesus, whatever it is my sister or brother is facing even right now. God, I pray for the power of the Holy Ghost to move in their life. God, if they're not saved today, I want them to be saved. God, if they're not yet delivered from the hands of the oppression, the oppressor, the hands of alcoholism, drug abuse, God, domestic violence. God, if they're not delivered from those things, God, I pray for deliverance right now under the mighty blood of Jesus. And God, I thank you for their witness today. I thank you for their soul today. And I thank you for the joy of the Lord that is their strength. Because God, I know you can. And God, I know you will bless them indeed. And God, you most certainly will enlarge their territory. I thank each and every one of you today who are already sowing seeds into this ministry. I thank God that many of you have found us at hopewellamec.org and you've searched us. You've known the fruit that you've seen and you've seen that God is continuing to produce in this season. I tell every and any pastor I come into contact with that in this season, the church still is thriving. As a matter of fact, I believe the church is doing more in this season than it's ever done before. We are still feeding hundreds of people on a monthly basis. We are delivering groceries even to their doorstep. We are continuing online Bible studies and virtual meetings. We are continuing to share our worship services on every platform. We are continuing to speak life into our young people and girding their loins up so that they might be productive and great parts of our society. We are still continuing to share the goodness of God in the land of the living and the love of Christ to you today. And so my brothers and sisters, if you can and if you will, continue to sow good seeds into this ministry by even visiting us on Give the Five. Even those of you who are going to the church between the hours of 10 and 12 today, yes, it is Friends and Family Day. Not only will you drop off your love gift to your church, but your church has a gift for you today. And so I thank God for you and I thank God for your life. I thank God for every officer, every minister of our ministerial staff. And I thank God for your life because I want you to know that in this season, you must check every relationship because God still has the final say on your life. God bless you and God keep you until we meet again. We are so happy that you were able to join us yet for another worship experience with the House of Hope. I'm going to ask that you do this uh, like we ask that you do it every week. But especially since it's Friends and Family Day, make sure that you share, like this video with all of your family and friends. And what else do they need to do this week, Braylon? Subscribe to our channel. And? And? Let me know in the comments if you love your family so much. That's okay. right. Let us know in the comment section, just like Braylon just said, if you love your family, which we know you love them. So why don't you just let us know how much you love your family and your friends. Earlier, First Lady talked about how we are just so blessed to have amazing friends and family. So do as First Lady has said, share, like, comment, and subscribe, but also let us know how much you love your family and how great they are. And by the way, while you're yet thinking about your family, today again is Friends and Family Day. And so when you stop by the church today, you're going to receive this exclusive Friends and Family Day bag brought to you by Hopewell AME Church. In the bag are so many great goodies and treats, but I would want to share with you that you're going to get a brand new devotional called You Are a Blessing. I can't wait for you to pick that up. You're also going to receive some sweet treats 
in your bag uh, to share with your friends and your family. Hold that for me, Braylon. But finally, the kicker is you're going to get this brand new custom mug, Sub-Zero mug for hot and cold items that is personalized with the Hopewell AME Church moniker and friends and family. And so, brothers and sisters, when you stop by today from 10 to 12, make sure you pick up your friends and family day gift. Until next time. Have a great week. See you. Bye. Bye. God bless. Holtwell Praise, join pastor on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 6.30 a.m. for prayer. On Saturdays at 9 a.m., join the ministerial staff for a live and interactive Bible study. Ways to give. You may use your Givelify app and search for Holtwell Amy Church, or you may visit Holtwell Amy Church between the hours of 10 and noon on Sundays, where a member from the Finance Commission will be available to receive your gifts of tithes and offerings. Have an amazing week, Hopewell.